oligonucleotide primers are used to amplify the gene of interest into millions of copies using polymerase chain reaction. PCR primers are short single-strand synthetic nucleotide, about 18 to 24 bases, that is complementary to the ends of the target DNA sequence. The sequence of PCR primers is responsible for the high fidelity and specificity of PCR analysis. Primers bind to the complementary bases on the target DNA sequence during the annealing stage of the PCR cycle to initiate the addition of new nucleotide bases facilitated by the DNA polymerase. The objectives of this activity are to design PCR primers to amplify the gene of interest and to describe the properties of oligonucleotide primers used in PCR. The materials for this activity are online open source bioinformatics platforms. ORF Finder is used to determine open reading frames or ORFs of a protein coding gene. Oligo Analyzer tool software is used to determine the properties of the design primer sequences. The Sequence Manipulation Suite is an online tool that can be used to obtain the reverse complement of the DNA sequence for the reverse primer sequence. And Codon Code Aligner, which can be used to visualize the primer binding sites on the target DNA sequence. Primers are designed to amplify a target DNA sequence to identify organisms based on a molecular marker or to amplify a gene of interest with biotechnological applications. To amplify the gene of interest, it is highly recommended to design your own primers based on the nucleotide sequence of the target gene. If the gene of interest is a protein coding gene, one will look for the start and stop codons. Paste the DNA sequence into the query text box and click Submit. In this example, a DNA fragment sequence shows two overlapping ORFs. There are two steps in designing PCR primers. First, identify the region to be amplified. Determine the start and end of the DNA sequence where the forward and reverse primers will be designed respectively. Second, check the properties of the designed primer sequences, which includes the primer length, melting temperature, GC content, and primer dimerization. The forward and reverse primers will bind to the complementary strand and guide the DNA polymerase to synthesize the complementary bases on the free hydroxyl group at the 3' end of the primer sequence. The sequence of the forward primer is the same with the sequence of the coding strand at the start of the target sequence. Synthesis of the complementary bases occurs only on the existing free hydroxyl group at the 3' end of the primer. Thus, the reverse primer sequence should also be designed on the 5' to 3' orientation. Generate the reverse complement of the coding strand at the end of the target gene to get the reverse primer sequence. Copy the end of the target sequence, paste in the text box, then click Submit. The reverse complement sequence, which runs from 5' to 3' direction, will be the reverse primer sequence. After generating the forward and reverse primer sequences, check the primer consensus sequence with the target gene. Codon code aligner can be used to visualize the primer binding sites on the target gene using the sequence of the designed primers. Input design forward and reverse primer sequences into the codon code aligner software with the sequence of the target gene. Primer binding sites will be shown in the consensus sequence. Check the properties of the forward and reverse primers.
Make sure the forward and reverse primer melting temperature are similar or close to each other so they can work at the same annealing temperature during PCR. At least 5 degrees difference between the forward and reverse primer sequence melting temperature is ideal. Melting temperature should be within the range 65 to 75 degrees Celsius. GC content influences the melting temperature. The higher the GC content, the higher the melting temperature. Find primer sequence with 40 to 60% GC content. Copy and paste the sequence of the forward and reverse primers in the Oligo Analyzer software, then click Analyze. Check for primer dimerization. Primer dimerization occurs when the forward and reverse primers self-anneal because of complementary bases rather than binding to the target DNA sequence. This may be prevented by increasing the annealing temperature on the PCR thermal cycling conditions and using less volume of primers on the PCR mix. Avoid choosing regions rich with repeating GC and AT bases because this may cause self-primer dimerization. Copy and paste the sequence of the forward and reverse primers in the Oligo Analyzer software then click self-dimer. Take note of the number of complementary base pairs. Avoid using primer sequence with more than 6 complementary base pairs. Check specificity of primers using BLAST. Use the sequence of the forward primer sequence and the complementary of the reverse primer sequence in BLAST search. This will determine whether the primer is highly specific to a specific gene or organism or may capture other homologous sequences from different organisms. One of the most important factors in dealing with PCR primers is the optimization of the annealing temperature on the PCR thermal cycling condition. The annealing temperature induces the attachment of the primers on the target DNA sequence. Too high annealing temperature may lessen the chances of primer attachment on the target DNA sequence. On the other hand, very low annealing temperature may cause mispriming to non-target DNA sequences. This is evident as several non-specific bands appearing after gel electrophoresis. The highest annealing temperature where primers are observed to anneal should be used to ensure specificity to the target gene. The figure shows the specificity of the designed ORF1 primers with the DNA fragment. The table shows the properties of the designed ORF1 primer sequences.